In this video, I want to show you four ways to transfer the drawing of the portrait on the canvas. But before I start, I want to say something about portrait painting based on photography. People sometimes disapprove this way of working. You are cheating. You have to work exclusively from life model, they say. I can tell you this. It is important that you learn to work from observation that's clear. And of course, good drawing skills are very important, I know. But there is no argument against another approach. Take a look at the internet and hear what David Hockney says in his BBC documentary, The Secret Knowledge. All right, I will show you four ways. First, the tracing method, then using a projector or a beamer, third, the grid drawing, and finally, by observation. Here we go. This is a picture of my model. Suppose you have no possibility to make a large copy yourself. The easiest way is to go to your local copy shop and ask for an enlargement. There is a chance that the picture does not fit on one sheet. So order two copies, one of the top side and one of the bottom and join them carefully. On top of this image, you place across a piece of transparent paper and stick it to the copy. Trace the outlines of the portrait. Not with too many details, only the main shapes and lines. Check thoroughly that everything is on it. I forgot one eye here. I pay attention to what is the front and what is the back side. On the back side, I cover the pencil lines with charcoal. I turn over the sheet and place it on the canvas. Now the charcoal is on the back. I stick the paper onto the canvas. But before I continue, I make four cross marks, first on the canvas and then trace them on the paper. If needed, I can lay back the sheet just at the same place. Now I copy the pencil drawing by retracing it with pressure. The charcoal will mark this drawing on my canvas. The framed linen might bounce and that can be difficult to draw on. Place a book under the canvas to avoid this spring back. The lines appear thinly on the canvas. Now I take a red pencil and redraw the portrait carefully. Red pencil just because the black graphite will later shine through the layers of the oil paint and that's pretty dangerous. Passing the drawing, I pay attention to the original photograph and correct where necessary.
The drawing is on the canvas and now I can make the underpainting, which I usually paint in acrylics. Check out my other videos on my blog how I do this. There is a variety of projectors available in the market, from opaque enlarges to digital projectors. The basic problem is the projection method. It is of utmost importance that the projected image appears on the canvas without distortion. This can be checked by drawing a perfect square on the canvas and then project a square from the projector across it. Move the projector until the two squares fit exactly, one over another. Another way is this. Here you see my digital photograph of the model. The size of my canvas is 60 cm wide and 73 high in this case. In Photoshop I crop the image to the same ratio. On a separate layer I divide both sides in four equal parts. I make the same distribution on the canvas, in red crayon, never just black pencil. Projecting this image, I make sure the guidelines in the picture correspond exactly with the red lines on the canvas. Now I can copy the photograph on the canvas. If you can't use or you don't want to use a projector, then the grid method is a good solution. An easy way to make a grid is by using tracing paper on top of a picture. But I will show you how I do this in Photoshop. As you see, I have a Spanish Photoshop version, but I will say the names in English. Go to View, Show Grid. Now you see the grid over the image. To change the size of the squares, go to Preferences, Guides and Grids. Set the size of the square in such a way that it suits you. Create a separate layer. Select the pencil from the menu and make the line as thin as possible in the setting. Place the cursor on the first grid line. Press the shift key and now draw the line. Hold down the shift key to make a straight horizontal line. I think you can't see it very well, but if you hide the grid, you see the drawn lines. Now complete the whole image. Where the face is, I make some diagonal lines to have more support later. Place the cursor in one corner of a square and click on it. Now go to the other corner, press the shift key and then click. In this way the two points will connect. The image I print out and attach it next to my canvas on the easel. Now I take over the picture carefully. The problem with this method is that you quite quickly can go astray with all these squares and I must admit I'm not so good at this method. I use charcoal for the mayor lines and surfaces. In some areas where I need more exactness, I make the drawing in red crayon.
drawing from observation. This is the classical method. And I would recommend you all to work directly from observation as much as possible. A good exercise for the perception and for your drawing skills. I start with the contours of the face and make sure that the portrait will come on the right place on the canvas. Here I see I must start more to the left. First, I determine the full width of the portrait. Now I measure how this width relates to the height. I see that the width is equal to the face up to the hairline. It is very important that you always measure with your stretched arm, otherwise the information is not reliable. Now I have the height and the width. I can subdivide the face. I give you two essential books, Bridgman's Drawing from Life and Drawing the Human Head by Bern Hogarth. This demonstration is too short to explain in detail all about drawing from observation. I hope you will understand. That comes later, maybe. It is important to measure as much as possible and to compare the relation of lines, forms and values. It is good to know that there are a number of standard facial measurements, but for a person's characteristic facial proportions, the secondary forms, small as they are, have the greatest visual impact. Therefore, compare as long as possible and see to it that you are more and more coming around a good likeness. do this drawing in charcoal, my favorite material. Together with some brushes, this technique gives me the opportunity to correct during the process as much as needed. Thank you. 
I can start now in oils, but before I do that, I have to fix my drawing on the canvas with the fixative. 